Good evening, everyone. I'm Shower Mom. I did survive Zumba. I think the last class I did was more harder than this one, but I did. Sw I do sweat a lot when I do Zumba. I just don't know how many pounds I shedded. And then I had McDonald's. I didn't even order fries, and they gave me fries. So I was like, oh, well, I just ate it. But it was like 3 o'clock, so I could burn that off, you know, and then I'll probably go to the gym tomorrow. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was when people assume that you're a certain way when you're really not, like, you know, for example, like, I, I don't, I had sent a picture to someone and I felt like it was wrong for them to assume that I was hitting on them. It's like, no, I'm not, I was like, I had just been with my ex or whatever, like, so no, I wasn't, I, I could actually be with my ex who I know is bomb at SEX. So it's like, okay, if I gave him up, like a long time ago, I tried to give him up, but then I ended up staying with him for like five or six years. And it, I felt like it was a temptation of the devil. But then I finally wised up and started having self-love, like, you know, cause like he would take me for granted and he wasn't ever rich to really take me out. And I have rich friends that would take me out, but they we just go out as friends. And it was like, people will, attack your character like that too like because other girls are d-i-c-k thirsty they think you're like that and it's like uh excuse me if i was like that i think i would be fucking my ex right now because i already know he's good at sex and i don't even know what you're like so why would i purposely you know stumble on my christianity walk if i'm gonna stumble on my christianity walk it's gonna be with somebody i already know is good at sex because it's like if that's what I was after, then I could get that. It's like, you're taking me out of my character. Like, I went two years when my husband was in prison in my 30s. Not even masturbation. I don't mean to talk about sex. But people get it twisted. It's like, I'm following Jesus, okay? I don't need your little insults or for you to think that I'm chasing you. If I text you as a friend or if I give you resources or if I try to tell somebody like who I really am so because I like people to get to know who I really am that I'm a good person and my exes are like a witness that I'm a good person because they want me back and it's like I got references I don't know about your last people that they probably don't have any good references I have good references because people want me back and they still want me in their life even if we break up so I don't know what type of people they hang out with or what type of person they think I am. It's like, it insults me. It's like, it's very insulting to know that I could be having sex. I even have, I had a fiance and I know if I went and got my divorce, he would buy me a house. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> He's a military veteran, a Marine. Okay, so like <laughs> last time we hung out, we kicked it a little bit and then, you know, he had to come rescue me because some guy robbed me in my motel room and there was a lot of shady people around there. And I was like, Taylor, come save me. And um, he's a really sweetheart. You know, he used to take me out and we've had like Chinese food together and we used to go to Denny's and that was my fiance. But I told him in the beginning, which he got sad about, that I don't like doing friends with benefits. So it was going to be like temporary because I have to go back to God to see what God has for me. And there was this other girl that he liked, which, you know, it was cool. You know, I met her and everything, but she wasn't about nothing. And he found out and then, you know, we could have got back together and I could be getting I could be getting my divorce. And if I really wanted to settle down, I could. But, you know, people are on pause right now. And I broke up with Charlie, who I was dating. He just happened to be in my house. I didn't really know him from a can of paint. And we just ran off one night because the whole household was stressing me out and I wanted to move out, but I couldn't find a weekly anywhere. And I just took him to help me with my dog because he was really attached to Princess and he used to love Princess. He used to take her for walks and stuff. And I met some really good friends and I let them stay there. I didn't even know how some of them got in my house. And some were cool and some were arguing with other people. And <laughs> it was just, a, it was a madhouse. It was just like, what's gonna happen today? Who am I gonna wake up to? And then TJ. <laughs> He went to jail and I was like, 
T I was I yelled at the cop because they were trying to arrest him and I was like I was like that's my friend let him go he didn't do anything and I was like and he goes I love you baby like we're just friends you know like and Shay thought that was her man and I was just like I never was with him but you know like I could have been he was like cute and everything and she even told me later she's like girl you know TJ is the bomb and all this and it was like good at you know what and I I just I didn't I wasn't with I can't be with everybody like I'm not I'm not like trying to ho hop or I'm not trying to like do all that extra stuff you know and we just had a fun time you know like with the little circle that we had um you know and it was just like there's a lot of party people that's all <laughs> but I was upset at Charlie because that's that's his government name. That's not his real name. <laughs> but, like, because I told him I didn't want him to, like, support these meth parties that they were having. And I don't do that. And, and it was like, only thing I do is weed. So when he just, I came home one day and he was having, like, a meth party. And when I just told him, can you please stop these people from smoking this stuff in my house because I don't agree with it you know and I've I've tried like every single drug because my dad used to be a drug dealer so like there was always drugs around like you know like, like one time there was like cocaine on the mirror and it's like I was young and I was like going to school so like I snorted it <laughs> I was like but I've done drugs like when I was really stressed out like <laughs> some guy from Texas um he offered me cocaine and I took it. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to unstress myself. Like, because I really didn't care at the time. I was like stressed the fuck out. So I even smoked a cigarette with Taylor. I was like, Taylor, give me a cigarette. I'm like so stressed the fuck out. And I don't even smoke cigarettes. Like, so Taylor was like, you must be really stressed out because you don't even smoke cigarettes. I was like, yes, give me a fuck cigarette. I was like, excuse my language. <laughs> it's like good girl gone bad type of stuff. And, you know, I've just been out there, like, so, I mean, I appreciate my friends. I have, like, a lot of friends. I even have, like, friends from my past that came through during COVID, and Christian couldn't even believe it. I was like, yeah, my old boss is coming to stay with me. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, like, you think that you're the only one that wants to marry me? It's like, uh, excuse me, um... You know, William's been offering his hand in marriage for a long time. He's my old boss. And he took care of me during COVID when Christian wouldn't even bring me a bottle of water. And I was just like, that's why I did that one rap. I was just like, my daddy don't like it. And he likes everyone. <laughs> Got my real friends getting out the shotgun. <laughs> when coronavirus hit, you ran off and split. And now everybody's seen you on the news. For those of you have, who haven't seen my little rap that I made out of a song that was like, my mama don't like you and she likes everyone. Well, <clears throat> mothers usually love me, but at first they might not like me because like, you know, I have a, I have a special place in their son's life, you know, so of course they're going to be territorial about it. But then they start to love me like me and my mother-in-law Sally we used to get along so well you know we've folded clothes together I vacuumed for her she was very appreciative and my mom used to say I didn't know how to vacuum she would just like talk shit like oh you didn't even vacuum very good and it's like okay well you're welcome bye get out of here no I'm just kidding it's like <laughs> mom be gone spray <laughs> and I got mad at my mom a couple times for just like not being like everybody else like how come other people take their grandkids and take care of them and she she left them in custody and it's like they've been miserable you know who wants to stay in custody when they could be with their family members like I was totally irate you know and it's like it's taken me a long time to get over that but let's get back to the subject of people misjudging you like, I literally went two years when my husband was in prison. And I'm going to send him this video because he didn't believe that. Just because other women are dick thirsty, I hate to cuss and talk smack about how other women are. I'm not like that. Like, I go solo dolo on people. I don't, it ain't that type of party. You either have respect for me or you don't. If you ghost me and don't text me back, I might blow you up just to disrespect you.
I'll be like, okay, well, you disrespected me by not texting me back. So how about this? I'm going to disrespect you even worse and I'm going to blow up you up. And then when that song came out, I was laughing so hard that Megan Thee Stallion wrote. Just, I was just like, that is totally true. Like, they want they want you to, like, blow them up and all that so that they could feel gratified, their ego. It's like, no, I'm not trying to gratify your ego. Like, if you want to talk to other females and say, oh, this one girl stalking me or she, uh, da, 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 da. it's to make their self look good. It's like, dude. A woman can get any man she wants if she really wants to. We don't have to beg for somebody's attention and we don't have to text you because there's a lot of fish in the sea. Just like Christian told me one time, there's a lot of fish in the sea. So you could always throw that back at them like, um, there's a lot of fish in the sea. OK, so chill the F out. I can go to college, baby, because I'm college, baby. I've been to college. I've turned down really fine guys, Dominican Republic nice handsome young black guys have turned down people that i shouldn't even turn down that i regretted turning down oh my gosh that one dominican guy oh man jose <laughs> i regretted turning him down and then his brother tried to hit on me and it's like you know it's like weird you know it's like i don't know it's just i know that i don't have to like I don't have to let people insult my intelligence, okay? Like, like, you think you're all that in a bag of chips? Like, yeah, maybe I did at one point think that somebody was all that, but that still doesn't mean that I'm after them for some reason. I just like to make friends. I have marriage proposals just sitting there waiting, you know? And I put people on pause because I'm serving God. I serve a king. I don't have to settle. I don't have to, like, chase after nobody. If it seems like I'm chasing after somebody, no, I'm not. Okay? I'm chasing after a king. His name is King Jesus. And he even says, if you can't take up your cross and follow me, you're not worthy of the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> or, like... He says, let the dead bury the dead. Because the guy's like, oh, I got to go bury my father. It's like he, he told the guy, let the dead bury the dead. You don't have to chase all these things. You don't, have to, you don't have to chase even your kids or your father or your mother. You have to chase God. If they don't love God and they don't want to chase God, all you could do is pray for them. You just have to be the, the vine that prays for your family like you have to be the strong person of your family to pray for them and pray that the devil gets off of them and pray that they come to God but that doesn't mean that you have to love them more than you love God because I took that seriously when I was young when my kids were growing up they didn't want to go to church sometimes and I tell and they thought that I forced them and I'm like no I never forced you to go because it says in the Bible you're not supposed to love your kids more than you love God so if I'm chasing God and you don't want to chase God, okay, stay where you are. I'm going to go to church. I'm chasing God. And maybe, you know, when you're grown up or whatever, you'll chase God too. But I was never forcing them to go. And I, I even said, I wish I would have, you know, because maybe they would be serving God right now because some parents do make their kids go to church. And my husband was talking to my ex who was like a rival. She was always jealous of me and I never knew it. And she tried to hit on my ex, my behind my back on the low and she was telling him all kinds of stuff like oh well she shouldn't make the kids go to church and then he used that against me in front of my kids like oh well you shouldn't force the kids to go to church you know so like she was like building ammunition so she was part of Satan's team when I'm over here you know trying to save my family but living in sin is not going to save your family you know even I got married afterwards but it our relationship didn't work because we started off having premarital sex. So people that are having premarital sex, nine times out of ten, it's going to fall apart. So you should just work with what God gives you and, you know, don't settle and try not to be deceived when the devil comes to attack you. <laughs> Let the people fall by the wayside. If they don't want to serve God, okay, bye. I'm serving God. Like, stay away from me or just kind of like, jump over these hurdles and just kind of steer clear of 
the danger. Like if you get around people that you know are living in sin, just you know, try to try to not let it take take your take you out of your character. Try not to fall into temptation. You know, because it's easy to do. You know, because it's probably not going to pan out. It's probably just a temptation that the devil thought would te would lure you in. Because you don't want to open up sinful doors. It's just like you want to open up doors that God has trying to open up for you, good doors. So if you sin, it's going to be like, okay, the devil got his punch at me. Like he's like he... He will try to get his punches in there some kind of way. So you have to just be stronger than the devil. You don't know, just just keep doing what you're doing or love people that are like want, not wanting to get their life right. Love them from a distance and keep going forward in the name of Jesus and let people know who you really are. It's like, no, I'm not who you think I am. If I was like that, I would be doing that I would be like with somebody that I know had me in temptation for like five to six years even though I asked him that I wanted to go back to God like five years ago I probably would have if I would have just been strong and not open the door to the devil like don't open the door like seriously like shh, try to keep the door shut but we all get tempted you know there's there's certain people that will tempt us because you know they're attractive or whatever you know but it's really not the ticket. You just got to be strong and just stay away. Like, um, so I just want to pray for everybody that is under attack because you're, when you're living in sin, the devil keeps opening up more sin and more sin and more sin. When you're saved, he's going to get you over those hurdles so you can triumph. So you can just like steer clear of any temptation that's coming your way. And, you know, it's like, it makes you cry because you really have a good heart and you really want people to know who you are. But they, if they don't want to get to know who the real you is and they're misjudging you because they've had fake people or they've had people that are, um, you know, like, uh, just, I don't know. People that are like, I don't know what the word would be. <laughs> my my coworker said <laughs> it was funny when I said people that are dick thirsty it's like they are it's like it's like that song girls you know you better watch out 